So what we're going to do now is take a look at the errors we've got now that we've made this change to our dates in our application and make sure that we fix all of these problems so that we can see our date picker working. And these errors are, are ones that we would expect. What we're doing inside our group activities by date function is we're passing a date or we're creating a date from a string in this case so that we can use the sort function and sort our activities in date order. But the dates.pass, if we go back to our activity store where this function is located and just open up the activity store and take a look at the date pass function, this expects a string as a parameter. And what we're doing now is we're specifying that our date is a type of date or it's null. And we're not allowed to pass either date or null into the date pass function. So we need to remove this first of all. And from both sides of this function. But we still can't use the sort function on a date. We need to convert this into something that it can work with. So what we can do is say to our sort function or our dates in this case and what we also have is no IntelliSense and that's because our date can either be a date or it can be null. So once again we need to tell TypeScript we know what we're doing here so we're going to add the exclamation mark and then we're going to say get time and we'll do the same for the b.date we'll add an exclamation mark and say get time and that resolves that particular error and if we move down to the next one we're using the split function here because we're expecting our dates to be in an ISO string format but now because our activity dates is a data object we now need to specify or we now need to convert this to an ISO string so that we can split our dates on the T character. So what we'll do is we'll specify to ISO string and once again I'll need to use the bang or the exclamation mark and I'll specify to ISO string and then we can use the split function. And let's keep moving down because we're using dates in other areas of our application here as well. And what we were doing here is because our dates had a high level of accuracy, we were splitting our dates on the period here so that we just got the ISO string without the milliseconds as well as the seconds, minutes and hours. So what we need to do here is instead of splitting our dates, what we want to do is when we store our activities inside our activity registry, we want to convert these into date objects. So what we'll do for this one, uh, we'll specify our activity date is a new date and then we'll pass in the activity date inside here and once again because we're using null we're going to need to use the exclamation mark because our dates can be either dates or it can be null and if we keep scrolling down there should be another place we're using dates and we haven't actually set our activity to use a date at all in this case when we load an activity and we want this to be consistent so let's go ahead and say activity.date equals new dates and activity.date and that way whenever we load an activity inside our application they're always going to be using JavaScript date objects now and if we go and take a look at our browser we can see that we've now got our activity form working again and if we take a look at our date picker we should be able to then select a date and select a time and I mentioned earlier that I don't particularly like this kind of styling where when we hover over this it looks like this is just a single input selector but there's, there's actually two different selectors here but there's no clear indication of this and we'll deal with that a bit later but at the moment we've still got a broken application because if I go and try and look at my activities then we're going to run into another error and what's happening here is that anywhere in our application where we're rendering the activity date this is rendering it or it's attempting to render it as a date object and we can't render objects 
in our render functions or in JSX. We have to render them as something we can display on our browser. So what we're going to need to do is make use of the datesfns format function and anywhere we've used activity.date inside JSX we're going to need to format our date objects into something that our browser can display or JSX can deal with. And we can do that quite easily using this format function. So let's head back to VS Code and what I want to do is I'm just going to use the search function and I'm just going to search for activity.dates and we want to take a look at all of our components where we're using this to render our date property inside our JSX. So we'll start with the activity list item and what we want to do is we want to import formats from dates FNS and what we can do is use the format function and surround our activity dates in parentheses and then we can give our format function a format string and for our activity list items we have a, a date above the items where we're grouping our items by activity date so all we really need to display here is the time of the activity so I'm just going to use h colon mm and a for am and pm and this will be in 12 hour clock formats and for now we need to continue to use the exclamation mark as well to let TypeScript know that we know what we're doing and we'll fix this very shortly but for now we'll just continue to use this so that we can get our application working again the next one we'll take a look at is in the activity detailed header and inside here, once again, we'll use the format function. Let's see if I can automatically import this. And no, I still need to restart VS Code. But for now, I'm just going to manually import this. And say import format from dates FNS. And then I'll give this an exclamation mark and a format string. And this time we'll display the dates in long format. And to do this in dates FNS2 and above, we need to use E E E E, all in lowercase. And the casing is very important in these format strings. Then DO and then MMMM in uppercase for the month. Then we'll head down to our activity detailed info components. And once again, we'll just bring in the format function from dates FNS and in our activity dates we'll say format and once again use the exclamation mark a comma and then supply the format string and in this case we want to specify e e e e d o and m m m m for the dates and then we'll specify at and i'm just going to copy this format and paste it in after the at and then change the dates into just the time and say h colon mm and then a for the time in 12 hour format with an am and pm so this in theory should have resolved all of our issues here and if I go back to the browser and take a look at my activities I can see my activity list is back and if I refresh that's working fine we can see we've got our time for each of these activities and if I click on view we can see that we can see the Wednesday the 8th of May and also Wednesday the 8th of May at 11.59 a.m. and it's a funny looking time because this is just the way that we seeded our data in here but that has at least fixed the problems in our application so we've still got a few things to clean up though with this because we're by far from finished with sorting out our dates here if I click on create activity the next thing we'll take a look at is what we can do about this and we want to do something better with our date inputs and my preference here is to split this into two separate inputs so we have a, a separate date input and a separate time input and we don't allow a, a joint date time picker in this case and we'll take a look at how we can do that next 